Sally Field's stepfather warned her that turning down the role of Sister Bertrill would lead to fewer offers for better work. Sally Field's win for Best Actress at the 1979 Academy Awards was a triumphant moment in her career, and one that will go down in history as one of the greatest acceptance speeches of all time. When her name was called, Sally was elated, and she took to the stage with a speech that brought the house down. She managed to thank everyone who had helped her along the way, from her co-stars and producers, to her kids who kept her grounded. But the best part of her speech was when she reminded the audience that before the film Norma Ray went into production, she was told that it couldn't be done. And there she was, standing on that stage, with an Academy Award in her hand, proving everyone wrong. It was a triumphant moment for Sally and a testament to her talent and perseverance. Her speech was a reminder to us all that anything is possible with hard work and determination. Go Sally! In the early 1970s, Field appears like a typical teenager, but in reality, she was married with a child and trying to shed her wholesome image to land more mature roles. Her marriage was falling apart at the time, and she eventually divorced her childhood sweetheart in 1976. When Sally Field was just 19, she began dating Stephen Craig, and the couple got married in 1968. During this time, she was filming The Flying Nun and became pregnant with her first child. Unfortunately, the series was cancelled before her pregnancy with her son, Peter Craig, became too obvious. Sally Field played the receptionist at the gym in the 1976 film Stay Hungry, where Arnold Schwarzenegger was typecast as a bodybuilder training for an upcoming competition. Field's petite stature made her a natural fit for the role of a boy-crazy, surf-obsessed high school teen in the show, Gidget, from 1965 to 1966. Despite the initial cancellation, reruns of the show eventually brought in decent ratings. Sally Margaret Field, a true California girl, was born in Pasadena on November 6, 1946. Her parents were Margaret Moreland Field and Richard Dryden Field, an Army veteran who served in World War II. Field has one brother, Richard D. Field who is a doctor and a professor. Her parents divorced in 1950 when Sally was just six years old. Later, her mother remarried. In the 1978 film The End, Sally Field posed for a series of publicity photos wearing a jersey with the number 22 on it, which was Burt Reynolds' jersey number back when he played football. Field's upcoming movie, 80 for Brady, marks the first time that she has worked with Jane Fonda on a film project. The two actresses have been friends for a long time, with Field joining Fonda in several of her activism events, and Fonda similarly supporting Field with her advocacy projects. In the 1981 film Back Roads, Sally Field portrayed a bristly, foul-mouthed prostitute turning tricks in Alabama, alongside Tommy Lee Jones, with whom she reportedly had a difficult working relationship. Sally Field was married to Stephen Craig from 1968 to 1975 and had two sons, Peter and Eli. Her second marriage was to Alan Greisman from 1984 to 1994, with whom she had a son named Sam. 
Although she was romantically linked to Burt Reynolds for about six years, they never got married. In her memoir, In Pieces, Sally Field revealed the true dynamics of her relationship with Burt Reynolds, showing a side of the Hollywood power couple that the tabloid media never saw. Field developed an eating disorder while filming Gidget and it extended to her time on the set of The Flying Nun. At her lowest point she was binging and purging, but when this proved to be too physically and psychologically damaging she drastically restricted her diet instead. Sally Field proved herself as a serious dramatic actress in the 1979 movie Norma Ray, playing a tough and determined union organizer. Her raw and gritty portrayal earned her an Academy Award. Following the cancellation of her 1973-1974 television show, The Girl with Something Extra, Field sought further acting training with renowned teacher Lee Strasberg at the actor's studio, who became her mentor and helped her expand her skills as a performer and move beyond her former image. Field started dating producer Alan Greisman shortly after her relationship with Burt Reynolds ended. Greisman has produced more than 24 films and the couple married in 1984. They were together for nine years and had one son, Sam, who is now working in the entertainment industry. Director Martin Ritt had to fight with Columbia Pictures to make Murphy's Romance, with Sally Field attached, and they didn't want to cast James Garner at first. Once he convinced them, Field said that her on-screen kiss with James Garner was the best cinematic kiss she ever had. Sally Field's character in The Flying Nun was a young girl from Chicago who has recently been arrested for participating in a free speech protest. She ignores the pressure from her family of high-achieving doctors to study medicine and announces that she wants to join a convent and dedicate herself to missionary work. She played a young bride with extrasensory perception in the 1973 TV series, The Girl with Something Extra, opposite John Davidson. The series was cancelled the following year. She was a cheerleader at both Portola Middle School and Birmingham High School in Van Nuys, California and had access to a stage from the age of 12. In those days, there were theater arts departments in schools and she was involved from middle school to high school. As a teenager, Field's home life was chaotic due to her strict stepfather and her parents' troubled marriage, which led her to seek refuge in extracurricular activities, particularly acting. Following the cancellation of Gidget, ABC quickly found a new starring show for Field in the form of The Flying Nun, a sitcom that combined the supernatural with religion and a disregard of physics, and focused on a diminutive novice nun who could harness the wind in her cornet and fly. Sally Field felt respected on the set of Gidget, but often felt humiliated on the set of The Flying Nun, especially during the flying scenes. She credited her co-star, Madeline Sherwood, with being an encouraging presence.
Sally Field's character in The Flying Nun explained that when lift plus thrust is greater than load plus drag, anything can fly. In 1976, Sally Field starred in the title role of the made-for-TV movie Sybil, based on the novel by Flora Rita Schreiber about a woman with dissociative identity disorder. Field's performance earned her critical praise and the 1977 Emmy Award for Outstanding Lead Actress in a Special Program. Later, she revealed that she related to Sybil's experience of compartmentalizing parts of herself. Field's agent told her she needed to add a major movie role to her acting resume, and after her breakout performance in Sybil she landed the role of a lifetime. That is the only reason she accepted the role of runaway bride Carrie is the 1977 film, Smokey and the Bandit, which starred Burt Reynolds, one of the hottest Hollywood heartthrobs of the 1970s, and comedian Jackie Gleason. Initially, Universal Studios didn't want to cast Sally in the role, claiming that she was not attractive and sexy enough for the role. But Burt Reynolds went to bat for her and convinced the studio that she was right for the part, Field told Oprah, believe it or not, Sybil, led to Smokey and the Bandit. This time, Burt Reynolds called me up personally. I pretended it wasn't shocking and scary that he would call me. He said he had this movie and the script wasn't very good but that he trusted me and would make it work. Actually, there was no script, in the end, we made up half the movie. The challenge for me was that people saw Sybil and said, boy, she can act, but man, is she ugly. So I thought if I did a movie with Bert and he thought I was cute, then somebody else might think I was cute and I could continue acting. It was a really hard time for women in film. There were mostly just tall, gorgeous models working, and I wasn't pretty. But by then, I was single with two kids. I had to earn a living. While filming Smokey and the Bandit, Field and her co-star, Burt Reynolds, became romantically involved and had a high-profile relationship from 1976 to 1980. They appeared in three more movies together during this time. Reynolds later regretted not fighting harder to make their relationship work. Sally Field's portrayal of the title character in the 1979 film, Norma Ray, earned her critical praise and firmly established her as a dramatic actress. The New York Times called Field's performance spectacular. In the 1984 film, Places in the Heart, Field portrayed a widowed Depression-era mother fighting to keep her farm and raise her children with the help of an African-American farmhand. The movie was a critical and commercial success, grossing nearly $35 million and collecting seven Oscar nominations, ultimately winning in two categories. During the 57th Academy Awards, Sally Field won the Oscar for Best Actress for her role in Place in the Heart. In her acceptance speech, she famously said, The first time I didn't feel it, but this time I feel it. And I can't deny the fact that you like me, right now, you really like me. Sally Field revealed on The Ellen DeGeneres Show that Tommy Lee Jones apologized to her for his behavior during the filming of Back Roads, and they reconciled when they worked together again in the 2012 movie, Lincoln. Sally Field led a star-studded female cast in the 1989 mega-hit Steel Magnolias, joined on screen by Shirley MacLaine, Dolly Parton. Olympia Dukakis, Daryl Hannah, and Julia Roberts. The film, based on Robert Harling's stage play of the same name, 
focuses on the strong bond between a group of women in a small southern town who come together to cope with tragedy, showing the power of a support system and the incredible strength of women. In 1993, Field starred alongside Robin Williams in Mrs. Doubtfire, where she played his ex-wife and mother of his children. Williams' character dresses in drag to spend time with the kids, and despite the creepy premise, the film became a huge hit. Field described working with Williams as he constantly tried to make her laugh. Field was only 10 years older than Tom Hanks, yet she was cast to play his mother in the 1994 movie, Forrest Gump. This was her second time working with Hanks. She said, I want to do it, Tom. I don't care what it is. I want to do it. Then I read the screenplay, and of course it's Forrest Gump, it's wonderful. I got to play younger than myself and older than myself. Cybel, Academy Award, TNT. Field made a return to television with a recurring role in the hit hospital drama, ER, playing the mother of regular character Dr. Abby Lockhart and earning an Emmy Award for Outstanding Guest Actress in a Drama Series for her portrayal of a bipolar patient. In 2002, Sally Field starred in the Broadway play The Goat, or Who is Sylvia? By Edward Albee, playing Stevie, the wife of a man experiencing a bizarre midlife crisis, falling in love with a goat. Sally Field joined the cast of the ABC family drama, Brothers and Sisters, as the matriarch of the Walker family, earning a Primetime Emmy Award and a Screen Actors Guild Award for her portrayal. In 2022, Field said that she takes great pleasure in the fact that her work means something to so many people. Sally Field has been advocating for women's rights and supporting the Vital Voices Global Partnership, co-hosting their Global Leadership Awards and working on behalf of gay rights. During the Pious Housewife skit, Field portrays an extremely religious mother who prays over every decision, no matter how trivial, leading to a hilarious interaction with Jesus himself. In 1996, Field began directing, making her debut with the television movie The Christmas Tree, and later directing an episode of From the Earth to the Moon. Sally Field's character in Absence of Malice becomes romantically involved with a local businessman, played by Paul Newman, and fails to verify her information, making it a popular journalism lesson in college classes. Field joined Jane Fonda's weekly protests at the United States Capitol on December 13, 2019, and was arrested by the Capitol Police after giving an impromptu speech urging protesters to demand legislative changes. Sally Field was diagnosed with osteoporosis just before her 60th birthday and has since started the rally with Sally Foundation to promote bone health and early diagnosis.
Sally Field prepared extensively for her role as Mary Todd Lincoln, reading biographies and visiting her former home to see personal memorabilia. She also spoke with mental health experts to capture the nuances of the character. While speaking with Vanity Fair, Field explained her approach to the role. In order to portray Mary Todd Lincoln in the 2012 film Lincoln, Sally Field had to gain 25 pounds, which was a challenge for someone as petite as she is. Working with a nutritionist, she had to eat a calorie-packed diet that she found repulsive. Sally Field received her own star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in 2014, marking her 50th year in the entertainment industry. Sally Field agreed to play Aunt May in The Amazing Spider-Man as a favor to the film's producer, Laura Ziskin, who passed away before the movie was released. Field found it difficult to find depth in the character, but enjoyed working with co-star Andrew Garfield. While filming the 1991 drama, Not Without My Daughter, Sally Field traveled to Israel and Turkey. The film was based on the real-life story of an American wife and mother who found herself trapped in Iran, trying to flee from her abusive husband with her young daughter in tow. For her role in this film, Sally was nominated for a Golden Raspberry Award for Worst Actress. Thankfully, Sean Young beat her out for this award for her performance in A Kiss Before Dying. Sally Field voiced the cat, Sassy, in the 1993 movie Homeward Bound, The Incredible Journey, alongside co-stars Michael J. Fox and Don Amich. Field was initially unsure about the improvised nature of the script for Smokey and the Bandit, but Burt Reynolds convinced her to take the part, and the majority of the dialogue ended up being improvised. Sally Field played the role of Congresswoman Victoria Rudd in the 2003 film, Legally Blonde 2, Red, White and Blonde, where she was the antagonist to Reese Witherspoon's character. In a new movie, Sally Field, along with Jane Fonda, Lily Tomlin, and Rita Moreno, play the quartet of octogenarians and avid Brady fans, in 80 for Brady, where 480 plus women travel to Houston to watch Tom Brady lead the New England Patriots to victory in Super Bowl 51. Sally Field survived a plane crash in 1988, along with her husband, son, and mother. In 1976, Sally Field starred in two vastly different productions, including the challenging role of Sybil in the award-winning TV movie of the same name, and the lesser-known Bridger, a true story about the legendary mountain man Jim Bridger. In 1977, Sally Field starred in the heartwarming film Heroes alongside legends Henry Winkler and Harrison Ford, playing Carol, a woman who was initially unsure of Winkler's mission to track down the men from his former unit during the Vietnam War. Sally Field, already a well-known figure in 1974, surprised everyone by appearing on the classic game show Hollywood Squares and playing tic-tac-toe with Paul Lynn. At a 
At the Cannes Film Festival in 1979, Sally Field won the Best Actress Award for her performance in Norma Ray, and she was overwhelmed by the emotional response from the audience. In 1986, Sally Field attended the American Film Institute Lifetime Achievement Award Ceremony for filmmaker Billy Wilder, rubbing elbows with the likes of Jack Nicholson and many of Wilder's cohorts. As she watched Wilder receive his well-deserved accolades, one can only imagine the thoughts running through her mind.